The figure below shows an encased steel column resisting an axial load. We are supposed to calculate the compression resistance of a 305 by 305 by 118 kilogram per meter UC column if it is encased in concrete of compressive strength 20 newtons per square millimeters in the manner shown in the figure below. Assume that the effective length of the column about both axes is 3.5 meters. So we are given a, an encased steel column of 305 by 305 by 118 kilogram per meter and we are supposed to calculate the compression resistance. Join me so that we can solve this problem. Thank you. I am George Kamiti. So the properties of this UC section, that is a 305 by 305 by 118 UC from Appendix B of the BS 5950 are as follows. Its gross cross-sectional area is 15,000 square millimeters. The radius of gyration about the XX axis, 136 millimeters. The radius of gyration above the YY axis, 77.5 millimeters. The effective length we are given as 3.5 millimeter, uh, 3.5 meters. That is the effective length. The design strength of steel, 265 newtons per square millimeters. The first thing we are going to do is to check the effective length. And in this case, we should check that the effective length of the column does not exceed the least of the following. Therefore, the effective length, which is 3,500 millimeters, should not exceed the least of 1. The effective length of that 500 millimeters should not exceed 40 times BC, whereby BC is the blade of the column. And therefore, this is going to be 40 times the breadth of the column is 425 millimeters. 425 millimeters and this is going to give us 40 times uh, 425 that is 17,000 millimeters. So we have 17,000 millimeters. Therefore, that 500 millimeters should not exceed 17,000 millimeters. The second one, it should not exceed 100 BC squared over DC. And therefore, this is uh, going to be 100 times the breadth of the column is 425. We square it, then divide this by 425. And when we do so, this is going to give us uh, 42,500 millimeters. And therefore, you can find that, that 500 uh, millimeters is less than 42,500 millimeters. Finally, we should check that the effective length doesn't exceed 250 times the radius of gyration about the yy axis and therefore this is going to be 250 times radius of gyration about the yy axis that is 77.5 millimeters and 250 times 77.5 that is 19,375 millimeters so we can actually find that the effective length of uh, that 500 millimeters is less than 19,000 375 millimeters and therefore it means that our section is okay. The effective length is okay since it hasn't exceeded any of the below. Then from there we are going to check the radius of gyration for the cased section. Therefore we go to ready of 
gyaration gyaration the idea of gyaration for the cased section or cased section and in this case The radius of uh, gyration about the x-x axis is the same as for the UC section. It is the same as that one for this UC section that we are dealing with. Therefore, the radius of gyration about the x-x axis is equivalent to that one of the selected section. Therefore, Rx is 3, 136 millimeters. But the radius of gyration about the yy axis will be given by 0 0.2 times the breadth of the column. Therefore, the radius of gyration will be 0 0.2 times BC. Uh, this is going to be 0 0.2 times the breadth of the column is 425 millimeters, and this is going to be 85 millimeters. Therefore, the radius of gyration about the yy axis is 85 millimeters. And actually, this radius of gyration about the yy axis should not exceed 0 0.2 times B plus 150. And this is going to be 0 0.2 into B is 306.8, so 306.8 plus 150. And that is going to be, so when you multiply 0 0.2 times the sum of 306.8 plus 150, that gives you 91.36 millimeters. 91.36 millimeters, therefore, you can find that, or you can see that the radius of gyration of 85 millimeters has not exceeded 91.36 uh, millimeters. And likewise, it should not be less than that of the uncased section. Or it should not be less than that of this section we are dealing with. That is 305 by 305 by 118. Therefore, it should or it should not be less than 77.5 millimeters. And actually, you can find that this 85 millimeters is falling in between 77.5 and 91.36 uh, millimeters. And therefore, it means that the radius of gyration about the x, the yy -Y axis is 85 millimeters, and therefore it is okay. The next step will be calculation of the compression resistance of the column section. So we go to compression resistance of the section. Resistance. And for us to be able to determine the compression resistance of this section, we need to determine its compressive strength. And for us to determine the compressive strength, we need the slenderness ratio. And in this case, we are going to begin with calculating the slenderness ratio about the x-x axis. And this will be given by effective length divided by the radius of gyration about the x-x axis. The effective length of this column section is 3.5 meters. We convert to millimeters, that is 3.5 times 1,000, which is 3,500 millimeters. Divide by the radius of the duration above the x-axis, which is 136 millimeters. And this is going to give us a radius of the duration above the x-axis of 25 point seven. And with a radius of a uh, duration of 25.7 and strength of steel of 265 newtons per square millimeters from table 
24B of the BS5950, you will find that the compressive strength of this steel section, PC, will be 257 newtons per square millimeters. Then on the other hand, the slenderness ratio about the yy axis will be given by the effective length divided by the radius of gyration about the yy axis. Therefore, the slenderness ratio will be given by 3500 divided by 85 millimeters, which is the radius of gyration about the yy axis. And that is going to give us um, 41. Point two, and with a radius of with a slenderness ratio, sorry, with a slenderness ratio of forty one point two, and strength of steel of two hundred and sixty five newtons per square millimeters, the compressive strength of this steel section will be two hundred and twenty eight newtons per square millimeters and in this information we are going to get it from table 24c of the bs5950 and therefore the compression resistance compression resistance of encased column of encased column that is PC compression resistance will be given by this formula gross cross-sectional area of the section plus 0 0.45 FCU whereby FCU is the strength of concrete design strength of concrete multiplied by AC the area of the column cross-sectional area of the column divided by PY, that is the design strength of steel, and then we multiply this by PC, the compressive strength of steel. And therefore, this is going to be AG, gross cross-sectional area of this section is 15,000 square millimeters. Therefore, we are going to have 15,000 plus 0 0.45 times the strength of concrete we have been given as 20 from the equation and then we multiply this by AC. The area of the column will be uh, 425 millimeters by 425 millimeters. So 425 squared, which is actually 180,625. We divide this by uh, 265 the design strength of steel, and then the whole of that bracket we multiply by PC, the compressive strength, which we have gotten it as 228. So 228 newtons per square millimeters. So this is going to give us a, a compressive strength of 4.81 times 10 raised to the power of 6 newtons which when we convert to kilonewtons we are going to have 4810 kilonewtons 4810 kilonewtons so this pc of 48 10 kilonewtons should not be greater than that of short strut capacity and PCS, PCS, the compressive resistance of short column uh, strut will be given by this formula. AG, gross cross-sectional area of the section, multiplied by 0 0.25 FCU times AC divided by PY. And then we multiply this by P Y. So we multiply by the compressive strength 
I mean we multiply by the design strength of steel. And therefore, PCS will be given by 15,000 plus 0 0.25, FCU is 20, AC is 425 squared, we divide this by PY, which is 265, and then the whole of that bracket, we multiply by the strength of steel, which is 265 newtons per square millimeters. And therefore, PCS, the compressive resistance of a short strut, will be equal to 4.878 times 10 raised to the power of 6 newtons, which when we convert to kilonewtons, that is going to be 4,878 kilonewtons. So we can find that uh, the compressive resistance of this section, which is 4,810 kilonewtons, is less than the compressive resistance of a short strut, which is 4,878 kilonewtons, and therefore it means that our section is very much okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how we go about it, and that is the end of our today's lesson. Thank you for supporting us. If you are not yet a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscription button as well as the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be notified.